everybody. Today I'm going to do a comparison video between two different half inch corded electric impact wrenches. Now one of these I've already done a full video review on and that's going to be the Cobalt one which is sold at Lowe's. But many people have asked me how it compares to the Chicago Electric version which sold at Harbor Freight. Now on the outside they may look very similar but what we're going to do in this video is really put that to the test. We're going to go over all the different features that they have built into each of these. We'll see how they compare side by side and then we're going to do extensive torque testing in forward and reverse to see what the power levels actually are. Here's a closer look at what comes with each impact and we can see that the Cobalt will come with a heavy duty blow mold carrying case as well as seven deep well impact sockets. Now these are on a rail, they're half inch drive and they're designed to work along with this or any pneumatic or cordless impact wrench. And they're also all of the typical sizes you're going to run into when you deal with lug nuts. The Chicago Electric, however, does not include any accessories. It only includes the owner's manual and a set of replacement carbon brushes. Here's a closer look at the Chicago Electric, and I do want to point out this is not a small tool. It's coming in exactly at 7 pounds, not including the cord. 12 inches long, 9 inches from where the cord comes out of the bottom all the way to the top, and then it is going to be four inches wide. Now you also want to keep in mind the cord on this model is going to be six and a half feet long, so most likely you would have to use an extension cord with it. The trigger is a rocker switch style, and if you press in the top it's going to make it go in reverse. If you press in on the bottom it will make it go in forward. It is not a variable speed trigger, and it's full on or full off. Now the anvil on this is going to be a friction ring or hog ring anvil. It does not have a little pin to press in. And installing and removing sockets is as simple as lining them up, pressing them into place, and then when you're done you can pull it right back off. On the rear of the unit you will notice a black circle on the left and on the right, and underneath of those is where the replaceable carbon brushes are. Because this is a brushed motor, eventually those brushes will wear out, and the performance will go down greatly so they will need to be replaced. Now Harbor Freight does include a set of the brushes along with the impact wrench at no additional charge. And changing that out is as simple as taking a flathead screwdriver, turning it counterclockwise to pop the cover off. You can pull the old brushes out, install the new ones, and then reinstall that cover. Lastly, I do want to point out that there is no rubber overmold or really any rubber bumper protections anywhere on this tool. On the front of the nose cone it is metal all the way to the end, so if you bang that into your rim it could scratch something up. And then the body is made out of a very hard plastic. Even here on the side there's no rubber over mold. It's very hard plastic and it does have a sharp edge, so if you set this down on a trunk deck lid or even at the roof of a car you would run the risk of scratching it. Here's a closer look at the Cobalt Impact Wrench and its dimensions are going to be very similar to the one from Harbor Freight. It's coming in at 12 inches long, 10 inches high, and then 4 inches wide. And without the weight of the cord, it's coming in at 7 pounds 12 ounces. Now the one thing to note here, the cord on the Cobalt is actually twice as long as the Harbor Freight. And it's coming in at a full 12 feet. The trigger is going to be almost the same, and if you press it on the top it will go in reverse. If you press it on the bottom it will be in forward, and it is also not a variable speed trigger, meaning it's full on or full off. Now the anvil is also going to be a friction ring or hog ring anvil, and we can take any socket, go ahead and press it into place, it's going to click right in, and you'll be ready to go. Once you're done using it you can just grab onto the socket and then pop it right back off. The Cobalt will also have replaceable carbon brushes because it is a brushed motor, not a brushless motor, and there will be one on the left as well as one on the right. They do not include an extra set of carbon brushes, so when those eventually wear out, you would have to buy a replacement set from Cobalt. A unique feature to the Cobalt is a power indicator light on the rear of the grip. Now when you plug this in and there's power present in the core, that will light up a bright blue. But if you plug it in and you don't see a light, it simply means there's no electricity coming out of the wall. This should easily help you diagnose if you have a problem with this. So if you do plug it in and you see a light and then it won't turn on, you know it's a problem with the unit. But if you plug it in and you don't see a light, you know it's simply a matter of not having any electricity. 
And finally, with the Cobalt, we have a lot of rubber overmolds. On the front of that metal nose cone, there's even a little rubber protective boot already built in. So if you bang this into your rim, you're not going to hurt anything. On the side of the unit, as well as around the grip, it is a soft rubber overmold. And if you set this down, it would really minimize the risk of you accidentally scratching something. One thing to keep in mind if you are considering an impact wrench, typically the corded models do not have something called an electric brake. Now what an electric brake will do is automatically stop the anvil when you release the trigger. And first we'll take a look at the Cobalt. When we release its trigger, the anvil will continue to turn until it automatically slows itself down. It's going to be the same way with the Chicago Electric. And to see what an electric brake actually does, I pulled out a cordless DeWalt and watch what happens when I release its trigger. Now one of the final things you do want to keep in mind if you are considering an impact wrench, typically the corded models are the largest. In addition to that, they're typically the least powerful and they're also coming in at being the least expensive. If we take a look at the corded model versus one of the high-end cordless models, you can see even though the cordless model is not a small unit, it is much smaller than the corded version. And that's going to be even more apparent if we look at a pneumatic impact wrench. This has a tremendous amount of power and is coming in at roughly half the size. Now for the torque testing, we'll first test forward working torque. To do that, I'll be using a Skidmore Wilhelm Model M with a one and a quarter inch bolt and a two inch nut. With this combination, we can accurately measure bolt tension in pounds up to 110,000. We'll take whatever the reading is, divide it by 70, and that's gonna give us our working torque rating. Now what we'll actually do are three different runs on each impact, alternating impacts between each run. And also between each run, I will be changing out all the lubrication on the back of the nut, on the washer face, as well as the threads, with a fresh coating of R-0050 test bolt lube from Skidmore Wilhelm. This is specifically designed to work along with this unit, and it will give us very accurate results. Now on top of that, I also will be using a brand new impact socket. This is a SunX Model 264, and I want to thank SunX for sending this over for our testing. Now lastly, each run will have a 15 second run time, and then we'll take the reading, write it on the board, and then alternate to the opposite impact. So we just got done with our forward torque testing and the numbers were very consistent with each impact. The Cobalt had an average of 41,000 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70 because of the nut and bolt combination we're using and after a 15 second run it produced 586 foot-pounds of forward working torque. The Chicago Electric had an average of 22,833 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70, and its forward working torque rating is 326 foot-pounds. Now for the reverse working torque test, we'll be using a Skidmore Wilhelm Model R with a reverse threaded nut and bolt. Everything else is going to be the same, including changing out the lubrication and the 15 second run times. We'll start out with the Cobalt, switch to the Chicago Electric, and go back and forth through three runs, Take an average of each, divide by 70, and then we'll have our reverse working torque ratings.
Okay, now we're done with reverse torque testing and the numbers were also very consistent with each impact. The Cobalt had an average of 44,500 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70 because of the nut and bolt combination we're using. It means that its working reverse torque rating after 15 seconds is 635 foot-pounds. The Chicago Electric had an average of 22,500. Divide that by a factor of 70, and its reverse working torque rating is 321 foot-pounds. So, now you've seen a side-by-side -side comparison of the Chicago Electric half-inch corded impact wrench, which is sold at Harbor Freight, and then the Cobalt half-inch corded impact wrench, which is sold at Lowe's. Now, you do want to keep in mind these are going to have a similar size, weight, and feel, with the major difference being those power levels. When we did our forward as well as our reverse torque test, the Cobalt had almost double the power levels of the Harbor Freight. In addition to that, it does come with those seven Deepwell impact sockets, as well as a blow mold case, and the best feature, in my opinion, other than the power levels, will be the warranty. The Harbor Freight is going to have a 90-day warranty, and then the Cobalt will have a five-year no-hassle guarantee. So if you ever run into a problem with it during that time frame, it's as simple as bringing it back to Lowe's and they're going to fix or replace it for you free of charge. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.